alongside the horrific images of the fungi-infested cellar spiders, which have made their way around the annals of Reddit, are the images of another natural phenomenon which barely anyone outside the realm of farm culture knows about. These disgustingly fish-like filaments of rubber and gel are a very common thing to see covering the feces of newborn critters. Let's take a closer look as to what they are, why they exist, and how old they might be. Ungulata is a clade of mammals known for the shared characteristic of hoofed feet. They all walk around on projections of their claws. Some do it on one claw, others on two, three, or four. Ungulata is split into Perisodactyla and Artiodactyla. Perisodactyls are known as the odd-toed ungulates. This group contains the horses, rhinos, tapirs, and the varied cornucopia of extinct forms, which once roamed the planet. Artiodactyla, which you might also see renamed as Cetartiodactyla, contain everybody else. The cattle, pigs, giraffes, camels, sheep, deer, hippos, and even the whales. The hoofed mammals have a bunch of adaptations to make the birthing process as quick and painless as possible. To the uninitiated, one of the most unusual among these adaptations is what has been named a deciduous hoof capsule. Those folks knowledgeable in the agriculture or farm industry are well aware of what a deciduous hoof capsule is. But for anyone who hasn't witnessed or aided a horse birth, the sight of what covers the foal's hooves immediately upon exiting the mother is quite appalling. Horses are unusual animals. They are one of the few groups alive today which stand on the very tip of their toes. There are two ways in which terrestrial tetrapods move around. One is to walk on the very end of the toe. This type of locomotion is called digitigrade. It's how birds, kangaroos, elephants, and more walk around. They place all of their weight on the pads covering the very last toe of the foot. Some of these animals have big cushions of fat and cartilage to spread the weight a bit more evenly, turning a bunch of toes into a single foot. The other way of walking is to place the body's weight on the toes, foot, and heel. This way of walking is called plantigrade. This is how we walk, as well as many other primates. Horses are unique because they are digitigrades that place their entire body weight on a single nail of a single toe. This evolved as a way for the animal to run fast for long periods of time. Since they only have one big toe and one big toenail that they spread their entire body weight on, it has to be sturdy and large. Over deep time, the horse lineage has enlarged their toe until it's basically a foot. The hard keratin sheath is only a cover. The rest of the foot has a few different parts which make up the hoof itself. The hardness of the entire structure makes it rather dangerous for the insides of the mother horse when it comes time to squirt the itty bitty foal out. As these hoofed mammals evolved, the continual emphasis on using one big hard toe to run on made developing a way to safely deliver these hooves a necessity. The hoofed mammal answer to this problem was the deciduous hoof capsule. The deciduous hoof capsule is a soft cap of gel or rubber-like keratin-derived tissue which covers the hard parts of the foot in most hoofed mammals. It's most well-documented in horses since we've domesticated them and are still well-connected with the species. The capsule isn't on the foal from the beginning. In fact, it only begins to form late into the gestation period, around the 11 month mark. Horses have a gestation period which can last between 11 and 12 months, with exceptions. This late development of the little flesh booties belies their importance. The developing mammal has the hoof capsule to protect the mother's uterus as it's birthed. An uncapped hoof would probably tear through the uterus as the baby is born, causing even more problems. It's a definite possibility that at some point, the lineage that led to hoofed mammals, the ungulates, didn't have this adaptation. 
As the hooves became bigger and sharper, this adaptation would have found itself beneficial enough to spread to the entire population and pass down to all offshoots. The deciduous hoof capsule itself is constantly replaced from below, at the base of the foot. It's also being constantly replaced from below by the permanent hoof capsule, which helps to create the foot and to protect the bones of the foot. Eponychium is a word you may see given to this structure, but it has become a little confusing amongst veterinarians and anatomists. In anatomy, eponychium is the thickened layer of skin at the base of fingernails and toenails. In humans, it's the part that's beyond or behind the cuticle. This part of the digits is not the same thing as the fleshy capsule that covers hoofed mammal feces. That's why Dr. Herman Bragula of Louisiana State University fully described the hoof capsule and the eponychium to fully differentiate the two. That's how the deciduous hoof capsule term came to be. In the wild, hoofed mammals need to be able to stand, walk, and run extremely quickly after birth. This is partly due to the usual dangers of being alive, but also because predators are attracted to the smell of the placenta. This conundrum is why foals have been recorded to stand within minutes of birth. The deciduous hoof capsule, therefore, must be able to come off the foot as quickly as possible. In horses, it usually takes a few minutes of walking around for the hoof capsule to be completely worn off, but can also take up to a few days. Horses are the best records of this phenomenon, but it should theoretically occur in most hoofed mammals. There are a few images that suggest its occurrence is almost universal among the ungulate family tree. Zebras As close relatives to the horse, it makes perfect sense that zebras would have a deciduous hoof capsule as well. As you can see from these images, it's somewhat similar to the horse. The white, gel-like coating will fall off similarly to horses. I couldn't find any evidence that donkeys and other equines have the same thing, but they'd have to. Rhinos The Twitter post which brought this whole hoof capsule thing to my attention belongs to Yara Herity, a PhD student with the Museum for Naturkund. The thread wonders if it's present throughout the Parisodactyl order, of which horses are a part. This image of a baby rhino foot suggests that, yes, the hoof capsule is present in other perisodactyls. This image of a deceased baby rhino also shows a splintered covering of the foot, which somewhat resembles the deciduous hoof capsule of horses. Since rhinos have three toes, they need a capsule that covers the whole thing. Other perisodactyls The only other living group of perisodactyls is the tapers. I can't find any proof that tapers have a deciduous hoof capsule, but they have three horny toes like rhinos, so it would be highly unusual if they didn't. Artiodactyls The odd-toed ungulates aren't the only ones to form the soft hoof capsule. This image of a baby hippo shows that their four-toed feet also come capped in a fleshy, splintered mess. Here are several images of a baby giraffe being born. If you look closely, you can see a whitish layer of splintered gel-like stuff. Giraffes have a deciduous hoof capsule too. If giraffes have them, then camels probably do as well. The swine part of the artiodactyl tree is not missing the capsule either. Here, you can see that this newborn piglet has caps covering its two hoof projections. According to the article from which I got this image, they dry out and are run down from the foot extremely quickly. As soon as the photographer put the baby down and went to grab another piglet out of the mother, the first had lost the hoof capsule. I've read some anecdotes that cows also have this structure, but there aren't any photos of it. As it stands, it's clearly prevalent in both the perisodactyl and artiodactyl orders. This means it's a characteristic that is probably ancestral to both groups. If this is the case, then ancient ungulates probably had these horrific fish fingers covering their cute little boots. Prehistoric Fairy Fingers The majority of the really weird ancient ungulates have feetsies that aren't weird. 
I think the most unusual critter we could look at that may also have sported some fleshy mitten coverings upon birth would be the Calicotheres. This group of perisodactyls originated in Eurasia before migrating to North America from the Eocene to the Pleistocene. They look like a cross between a horse, a ground sloth, and a gorilla. They are related to modern horses, rhinos, and tapirs, but diverged from them to use their long arms and claws to browse the tops of trees. They were likely born with the dangerous talons that capped their hands. Since other mammals with sharp claws don't have a capsule to cover them during birth, I wouldn't find it very likely that the Calicotheres had them for their hands. Since their back feet were more like the feet of horses and rhinos, they probably did have a covering. Since both groups of ungulates have examples of the deciduous hoof capsule, it should have been present in the many-toed feet of primitive horses like Eohippus and Mesohippus. The ancient forebears of cats and dogs were prowling the shadowy forests where horses first evolved, so these small proto-horses still needed to cast off their jelly coverings as soon as they were born. Some things transcend time, as is the life of the hoofed mammal. What do you think? What other groups of mammals have I missed that you think may have had hoof capsules? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and share it around. Leave a comment if you like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon too if you want to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Pledge to my Patreon at any tier you like for a slew of many delicious offerings. Special thanks to patrons Dinosaur, Natty Cat, Steve Bradshaw, Thea Svensson, Arda Bayer, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Antron.